Hello, I am Bishop Earl Boyer of the Diocese of Lansing. I invite you to join me in seven brief meditations on the gifts of the Holy Spirit. We will be reflecting on these seven gifts through the lens of seven different scriptural characters. We have received these gifts in baptism and confirmation. May these Bible accounts help us to let the Spirit be alive in our hearts and minds and souls. Can you imagine being faced with this dilemma? Two women come before you claiming to be the mother of a baby, and it is up to you to decide to whom that baby belongs. And by the way, this was before DNA testing. The young King Solomon told one of his attendants to bring him a sword. He informed the two mothers that he would split the child in two between them. Of course, as he knew, the real mother protested and told him to let the child live and give it to the other woman. The woman who was not the mother wanted the child killed instead. The scripture text tells us, and all Israel heard of the judgment which the king had rendered, and they stood in awe of the king because they perceived that the wisdom of God was in him to render justice. Sometime before this, the young Solomon's father, King David, had died, and in a dream, God offered Solomon anything he wanted. Well, I can imagine what many of us might have said. Instead, that young man asked for wisdom so that he might be able to tell the difference between right and wrong and would be able to govern his people well. The gift of wisdom in the Holy Spirit is not like wisdom as the world understands it. When the world speaks of the wise person, the world usually means someone who is clever or who has common sense, with emphasis on common rather than on sense. This is worldly wisdom, what has come to be acceptable. St. Paul, in his letter to the Corinthians, says this about worldly wisdom, for the wisdom of this world is folly with God. The gift of the Holy Spirit, however, means that we are open to God's action in us and that we savor or taste the things of God. That is the wisdom Solomon wanted, a share in God's own wisdom to do what was right. Before Solomon was granted this great gift, however, he had acted according to worldly wisdom. That is, he did what was clever and made his life easier. I suppose we could say he was merely following common sense. As a new king, he arranged for the death of his elder brother, Adonijah, as well as the deaths of General Joab and the priest Zadok, who were both supporters of his brother. Solomon thus began his rule in blood. The wisdom of this world is always easier for us. The wisdom of God is usually more difficult. But after this, when Solomon was clearly living in God's wisdom, he was known far and wide. We are told that he wrote 3,000 proverbs and 1,000 songs, that he built a huge new temple in honor of the Lord God, and that it was beautiful to behold, that people came from far and wide to ask him questions. The Queen of Sheba was completely taken with him. She cried out, happy are these your servants who continually stand before you and hear your wisdom. To have God's wisdom is to have a positive impact on others, to be a helpful friend to lead others to truth and salvation because we are in communion with God. That is what being a true leader involves, something which I presume we all want to be. Later in life, King Solomon did not always act on this holy wisdom. Instead, he chose to be wise in the ways of the world. We are told that he ended up with many foreign wives and began to allow the worship of many false gods. I guess you could say, he was being very tolerant of other points of view. The Bible tells us, and his wives turned his heart after other gods, and his heart was not wholly true to the Lord his God, as was the heart of David his father. This openness and tolerance of falsehood led the king to do much evil, even though he felt he was only following the ways of these times. Worldly wisdom sucks one in. Divine wisdom, on the other hand, leads us to act as God's sons and daughters at all times. Brothers and sisters, we all need this gift of wisdom as did Solomon. Temptations will always lurk at our door. Temptations to be part of the crowd. Temptations to want the ways of the world. Temptations to tolerate evil in our midst. Temptations to walk away from our relationship with God, who alone can make us truly wise. 
Left to worldly wisdom, we will probably give in to these temptations. But we have holy wisdom, God's own wisdom, to know what is right and wrong. Let us not give in to the ways of the world. Be bold for Christ. Be bold for God's holy wisdom.